I'm making this video to, I guess, help with my healing. If you have an idea of what this video is about, then you'll know just how deep this is about to go. It's very easy for me to make a joke about it. I think that has actually prevented me from any type of healing the past four years. It's better to speak about and hopefully that will inspire others to speak out about their struggles so they can find the help that they need as well. I can't do this. Can't do this. Can't do this. What if everyone judges me? It doesn't really even matter what I look like because this story is going to blow people's minds. Alright, let's get to it. You don't really know what's going on in someone's life and everyone's been through something, right? To a degree. We need to learn not to prejudge, to work on prejudice and work against it. Because I know full well people have judged me over the past four years. Let's get into it. Healing. I believe what is going to help me on the road to healing is addressing my problem. Honestly, can you tell that this is not an uh, easy subject? I'm literally skirting around. So a bit of background. I come from a Polish family. I was brought up very, very religious. My relationship with my parents, I remember comparing it when I was really young. In primary school, a lot of my friends, well I didn't really have many friends, the people that I hung around with had really good relationships with their parents. Thankfully I had my auntie thinking, well if I can't have that with my own mum, then at least I've got that with her. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. Where am I going with this? It's already been eight minutes. God, thank you. I don't want to cry. Come on. Whew. This is my life, just getting sidetracked by things because I can't face the truth. I met some of the best people of my life in in university, one being my best friend, uh, Brooke, who I often talk about. I promise I'll be out your hair, Brooke. I met some of the best people during my time at uni. They really showed me who I wanted to be. Dance in the kitchen, watch films together, go out, which was just insane. The best time. And that's when I met. Do I name names or no? I don't think he deserves to be named. He was on my course at uni. Also, if anyone is watching from uni, don't. If you're gonna watch it, at least subscribe to my channel. I developed, like almost in instantly, these feelings for him. Yeah. This was my first proper boyfriend. It was only a couple of months that we were actually together, uh, but it felt like it had been this lifetime. I think when you get broken up with, you have undeniable hurt. I'm not making excuses for him. It's not what I'm doing. Anyway, time goes on. I started working for one of the clubs in town. Fell madly in love with the bar manager. Ended up in a relationship with for three years. That's my third relationship. My last one It ended last January. That's me done never to be in a relationship again point blank never because of this bombshell story set the scene i'm at work at the nightclub I get a message another girl in our course so i thought that's really weird and it said i need to talk to you she said it's about your mum she proceeds to tell me that this guy had been sleeping with my mum for two years my first boyfriend had been sleeping with my mum i didn't feel it now like how i felt i was like <laughs> Yeah, whatever. It turned out not to be a prank. If you've really been talking to my mum, prove what her number is. You know, thinking there's no way that this is true. Straight off the bat, she was like, oh, seven, seven, blah, blah, blah. I am about to throw up. This guy that I've been seeing, freshly seeing, by the way, a few weeks in, like, excuse me, I've just had a very devastating phone call and I'm going to have to go home. I just found out my mum's having an affair with my ex-boyfriend and it's been going on for the past two years. Shortly after, he followed me back to my... Thank you, Jesus, that he did, because I was not okay. I'm still not okay today, so. That's on growth. A lot that's happened from that moment, that moment right there, that I've just put you in, and this day today. The realization that it's true, not knowing how to deal with it, there's been a lot of lies, things come out about addiction, fast forward from that, forgiveness has happened between certain members of the family and I'm left in a place where I'm no better off than I was four years ago. Everyone else seems to have grown from it, found some sort of closure and I haven't. The night that I found out my world turned upside down, how could a mum do that to her daughter? What did I do? If I'd done something in a past life to deserve this, I've been a good daughter. I'm not no master chef in the kitchen. The night I found out, I was a mess. I was a mess. I don't even 
really remember the rest of the night and by the next day the guy that I was seeing props to him for sticking around because that is a lot he took me to Chester Zoo the next day and I'll tell you what I don't remember being there I think I was so overcome with what had happened and my brain had just gone into like shock maybe I couldn't sleep I couldn't eat I hatched this great plan with Brooke why don't you write a letter I didn't know what to say to her I was like I really wanted to be angry, ruin her like she'd just ruined me. I really wanted her to feel the pain that I was feeling then. So I wrote it all out in a, in a letter. I delivered the letter. From her reaction, I knew straight away that she knew what I was doing. And I was like, look, I don't want to say anything to your face because I'm going to say the wrong thing. That's why I've taken the time to write it all out in this letter. Here's the letter. Goodbye. And I walked away. All I wanted was for my mum to be honest and to tell my dad for all his wrongs he doesn't deserve what happened. There's a lot of hurt and unresolved anger, resentment, fear. I'm very fearful that I will bring like toxic energies into new relationships. Obviously I don't speak to my mum, why don't I speak to my dad? My mum, bless her, managed to convince my dad that I orchestrated the affair. He is a fool to believe that parenting 101 there so I've decided to snip 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 that out of my life because I can't hold on to it any longer almost all of my friends are parents now when I think about the fact that eventually I want to have a family I want to get married and I will not want my parents involved in that grieving a loss for people who are still alive Part of me wants to be strong enough to forgive and be like, yeah, you know, I forgive you, people do bad things, let's move forward. And part of me is so hurt. I know people go through worse things. Some of the people who are absolutely closest to me have been through unimaginable things. It's just a different type of trauma. How can the people who are supposed to protect you through your whole life um, do that to you? People are going to watch this video and be like, wow, I didn't know this happened. Of course you didn't maybe that's why we shouldn't prejudge people you don't know what someone goes through I've never spoken about it on social media before ever four years until now I want to become this person who is an advocate walk the talk as well as walking the walk this is absolutely terrifying for me to talk about shaking it stopped me from looking for a like true relationship again because how do you really bring that up? She must have emotional baggage. So long I have literally had to like do this and like gulp it back down. And that's not healthy. I want to create a space where all people feel safe. Can talk about trauma, success, struggle. Normalise that this happens to people. Maybe not to my EastEnders Jeremy Kyle episode. If I'm honest, I'm all about the honesty. Unlike my parents. <laughs> Recognise when we need help I mean to ask for help I am destined to help other people through struggle I know what it can do to someone and where it can put you in your head and I want to prevent that for other people if you've got a problem or you're in a bad place talk to me call me go for a walk we can say nothing we sit in silence we can laugh hold hands I am here there are days where I don't feel present today is one of those days I feel like it's a real day. Lockdown has not helped whatsoever. Everything seems hazy, blurry in my head. And I just want to hide in bed all day, so that's what I've done. We need to take time out, look after ourselves, rest our body and our minds, and attack it another day. I missed out a key bit, haven't I? Why did it come out? The girl who told me threatened my mum and said, you either stop harassing this boy, or I'm going to tell Lucia and your family will suffer and my mum just couldn't help herself and that's what happened and as a result here we are today finish this video by saying it's okay to struggle and you're not going to have it together every day and you don't know what other people have been through so please don't judge we need to learn to be open welcoming for people who need to talk to us and recognize that people heal at different paces and it will get better although it doesn't feel like it i'm still waiting for it but it will get better look after your body look after your soul in the end you've only really got yourself if at least one person is inspired to speak out about struggle from this then i've done the right thing and i'm always here learning to love